All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. Why beat around the bush? Let's jump into it today. We are rock climbing and it is anamorphic. Don't do it, buddy. Don't do it. Told you. Told you not to do it with the drone shot. And it's looking good. It's very nice. Troubles. We fast forward. <gasps> We're going to see this kid's backstory. That's the climber in the belly. Soft anamorphic lenses. Let's go full screen so we can see what we're actually looking at. Boxers, handheld, shutter speed, yes. Sweat, drip, PA, running to get coffee. Please hurry. Should have run faster. Walking. Oh, and uh, archival footage. Snacks at the airport. Don't do it, buddy. Don't leave your family. I have to. I must. No, don't. This is her daughter, his daughter. That's the son. And broccoli? Yum. Fire? The production design or the production value in this commercial is crazy. Uh, we don't have to watch the whole thing to go through it all. You see, it's beautiful. Uh, we're going to mainly be talking about the rock climbing stuff. And then where is it at the end there? I mean, this is this little stuff at the end here. We got the photographer. You got bullets going off. Oh, window shattering. People painting. This is what happens when you get anamorphic, old anamorphics, and light coming directly towards the lens. See, it just washes everything out here. Just sort of takes all the contrast and washes it away, and there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. It's bright spots in the area coming into the lens. You can't fix that. But, I mean, a really beautiful commercial. And I think we're out. Same thing here. Like, all of this harsh front light coming in. Like, you contrast this with the stuff that we are going to look at. And it's, I mean, this is all lens behavior. You just cannot, you can't get this dark if you have this much light coming in the lens because it just bounces around inside of all the elements and you end up just washing out the whole image. But some beautiful looking stuff in here. So you should recognize, oh, this is actually my favorite part of the commercial. Before we break it down, see this? Like, okay, normally you're gonna have this, it's gonna be a VFX car, but we're gonna do it for real life, right? And the precision driver always gets uh, darkened down, ND windows, you can't really see them. Uh, you know, you tell your parents, I'm working in the film business. You'd never believe it. I'm a precision driver. Yeah, really? No, it's me. And look at him here. <laughs> He's got his little headset on. He finally made the ad. You did it, buddy. You made it to the big time. <laughs> He's laughing, going, they're going to have to cut this out. They're going to spend so much on VFX that uh, we're going to have to come back and shoot it all again. Yay, everybody gets another day out of the production. And you can see the Russian arm in the little rearview mirror here. Um, it's just a, it's a funny ad because he's up there looking at him. He starts driving up. He's like, you can use this. You can use this. You can't use any of this stuff, guys. You're going to have to get rid of my face. That's it. <laughs> anyway, shout out to the precision drivers. Okay. So what are we going to look at first? Let's do this rock climbing stuff because it's beautiful. Okay. We're going to see that it's overcast day, right? This is our, uh, a lot of times you'll see with really um, great looking cinematography in commercials that goes anamorphic specifically. Uh, and usually it's car commercials that will do this, but uh, for this, I mean, I guess this is a car commercial, so it's funny that they do it, but you'll jump in really close to really far, right? Macro anamorphic is like a thing, and this is not really macro anamorphic, but it's really close, right? And it's an overcast day. We're still shooting into the shadow, but I mean, we are really floating in a world of nothingness here, but what makes this interesting is, okay, yes, the tones in the background that match up with the tones on his hand, this little bit of green production, that's all nice. But really, it's the light here, right? Little slivers of light, basically shooting into the shadow by, by doing the same thing we would do if this was somebody's face, right? This is the exact same thing we would do if it was somebody's face, right? We're going to have the upstage key. We're going to have the shadow down towards the camera. We're going to chase it with a little light this way. Just that little tiny leak here, this little thing here. But the majority of it, if we're looking at the frame, I mean, it's lots and lots of darkness for a daytime in the shadow rock climbing person. We come up here, same idea. I mean, this is where you really see the benefits of the anamorphic frame and shooting, you know, pretty close to wide open here. Uh, you can see there's not a whole lot. What is that? It's about two feet in focus here. And the person is not in focus. Uh, right there, almost gets him in focus. Um, anyway, you see hands in focus, face out of focus. But it's really nice because you got the leak of light. We're shooting along the rock. And as we get closer to camera, darkness, right? dark towards camera. I don't know what I did with the pen there. I just went a little crazy. But you're going to have a big, giant neg behind the camera to soak up all this light so that you get this, even though 
there's no direct sunlight here, right? Which means this sky is acting as a big giant softbox here. To get shape on it, we need to cut off all the light coming back at them this way, right? So you get a little bit of something here. And we're just shooting into the shadow and letting the light wash over them. So it gets real soft. It's just like you're in an overcast day when there's no direct sunlight, the sky becomes some big giant softbox. And the jump and the miss and we're out. And you see the transition there from like, oh, we're in the anamorphic world of softness and focus. And then we jump out to the drone and the little Inspire drone that we're on uh, makes everything that tad sharper. Something tells me they didn't have an Inspire drone on this, but you never know. Same thing here, okay? When we're looking down like this, see how we're looking into the shadow, right? If you go out with your buddy and you want to get some rock climbing footage and your stuff does not look like this, uh, that's probably because you didn't plan properly. Uh, or it could be because you're not very good at cinematography. You want to shoot and get some shape. Even though we're up on this giant rock, it should be big and flat, right? There should be, there shouldn't be that much darkness. But the darkness is what makes it look nice. So that's why you do it. Okay, this one, same thing here with the anamorphic lenses. You can actually see in here. We're going to come to this shot this wide. See how soft this is? This is like, okay, we've got our wet down here. Not really. This is like take four on a wet down. Because you've done over here. And then over here dries because it just gets too hot. And, you know, you CBF going in there and doing the wet down every single time. So you do like three or four takes in between each wet down. And that's when you end up with stuff like this. See, reflection, better than not having reflection. And this is the same thing as when we were looking at uh, the lady painting. There's so much light coming towards the camera that on older anamorphics, it's just impossible to not get this softness. You really have to stop down even then. Sometimes there's just light, come, too much light coming into the camera. Okay, the other one that I want to talk about here, this is your classic track and field thing. You will shoot, if you shoot long enough, you will shoot at a track just like this, or you will shoot some night sporting event just like this. This is all, I mean, this is single light, really, plus our little flare light that happens over here. But we're just trying to get a little tiny bit of interest here. We got our little sweat droplet here. This is like the perfect reference still for any sports thing that you will ever see, any treatment with sports that you will ever see. There is this shot in there. A little flare right there. And you just got that line of light, right? And really, the big thing here is because you're pretty much in control of everything, there's nothing back here that you have to deal with or manage this. It's just darkness. You're setting probably you're setting this key level to how much you want in the shadows, right? So to determine how dark it is over here, it's easiest to do so by using the key to do that. And you can walk in the neg, you put in your little flare light over here, and you're laughing. But this is the important one, right? The, the switch, the PA running to go get coffee orders. Here he comes. And now we have this light on over here, which is going to fill him in to the front. Right? We're so wide, and they have, what is this? Do you think that's real? Or do you think there's a tube over there? A tube of haze, the tube of death, just bringing up a little bit of haze. Looks like it's real, or it's actually VFX. Anyway, lots and lots of light coming here. But because we're so wide, and because we have this darkness in the foreground, it's okay, right? There's not a whole lot of shape, except for this fall off darkness in the foreground. Now, when we punch in, watch what happens in the levels. So here we go, dark, running, 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 lots and lots of front light, all backlight. All the front light here. I mean, yeah, it's all gone, right? It's nothing but darkness. We're doing nothing but backlighting here. And normally what happens is, okay, you're going to use these stadium lights. You're going to put in your fake stadium lights if they're not real. Um, but then you're going to have a gigantic light over here up in some cherry picker as high as you can get it and as far away as you can get it. So you get this big shadow happening on the ground, right? Ideally, that's what you're going to do. So you get some, see the little... It's like a little sandwich light on him. But the majority of it is coming this way. As you can see, the shadow going that way. So, does it match? No. Does it look good? Yes. And is that the most important thing? Yes. What about the story? Nobody cares. Same thing here. Oh, we're going sun in the shot. But just look at the little angles here. All of this stuff in the foreground. And, well, there's not a lot of light coming back on him. I mean, you can see there's something inside providing all this level. But the sun is over here, so you're not going to go too strong with the light. Now, we always talk about how, you know, sometimes it's nice to be able to shoot along the windows in the room. Well, this is not shooting into the L of the room. This is shooting straight into the wall, which can make it kind of flat. The thing that saves it from being flat is all this stuff in the foreground, giving you that third dimension, right? 
because this wall is actually really, really flat. And even the buildings in the background, they're kind of, you, you don't really see any depth to those things. But just opening up to this, to the treadmill just a little bit, allowing you to see a little bit more of the front of the treadmill makes a really big difference. And we're just filling in with the light over here. All the key light is coming from, well, it's not even a key light, just lighting up the whole scene is over here. And then you're filling to taste on the face. Now, once we do that, same as before, when we were looking at the track stuff, as soon as we punch in, we're going to create an entirely different look. And I mean, you see how the, the key on the face, right? There is almost nothing there, just enough. And it's just enough, even still, it's only on this side. This is all darkness. This is where the key is coming from, but it's a different color. It's a little bit blue. As we jump in, magically, we have backlight plus our wrap. This is classic exterior, only we're doing inside. This is the sun wrap, right? We've got sun over here, giving us this harsh line. Then inside over here, you're either doing it with a light or you're doing it with a, an electric poly, uh, which are the same things. So you're just wrapping around this light that is coming from over here. That's how you make it feel, not very sourcey. And we got all these little things in the background lighting up, super shallow depth of field, anamorphic, right? Go to the archival footage, pops in the car, we get out, same thing, like see how, okay, sun is in in this shot. This is like a French over here that we're doing. Again, shadow to camera, little thing in the foreground, things in the background, different points of interest, but this is a really, really nice looking shot. Then we come out and where is the sun? Just out of the frame, right? Just out of frame that way. So that way we are looking into the shadows of the building. So as he walks, we get a nice little glow around him. And same with the car. We get a nice little glow around the car. And he's out and we're walking. Ta-da. And we keep going. I mean, this photographer stuff is gorgeous too, right? Like, why is this so good? You got the color of the fire. That's mixing in with just that little bit of wrap that's going on here and all this darkness. And then in the background, we're shooting along this building, so you get the depth of the building, plus all these little broken up areas back here. So, very, very nice VFX. Who knows, that could be a real building. This one is probably my least favorite. This is... Video just on, this is the framework, right? Shears, light up stage, but this is what it looks like when something doesn't... Feels very, very balanced. The levels in the background, Right, that toe of the image, that feels balanced. The wrap on the face, just a beautiful looking image. And then we're out. Okay, you get the point. Again, favorite part of this commercial, by far, this dude. He's loving life. Actually, that's probably a look on the DP's face at the end of the job going, we made it. Send off the invoice, boys, we made it. Ha ha ha. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, if you want to make something nice, uh, create as many shadows as you can, even if it doesn't make any sense, right? That rock climbing stuff, should there be that much shadow um, halfway up a mountain? No, right? It should be all filly and gross, but don't make it that way. If you want to make stuff nice, give it some shadow, give it some shape, give it as much depth as you can, and we will see you in the next one.